Well, hello everybody. My name is Bricky and welcome to another episode of Fireside Bricky, one of the much older series that I currently have. It's a long form commentary, basically a bunch of just simple talking, a little bit of a conversation between the two of us, completely non-scripted, all off the cuff. You'll hear a lot of mistakes, a lot of rambling, a lot of me saying something and then going, uh, and then moving into something else. But that's just the nature of it. It's basically, well, I mean, not basically. Basically, it was 100% based off of uh, uh, um, Frank Franklin. For, yeah, yeah, the F FDR, you know, FDR. FDR's fireside chats way back in the Did day. Because I thought, okay, people are screaming at me. So I always it. thought it was a really cool idea just to be able to have like a quasi-conversation and talk about a lot of stuff. Beforehand, Fireside Bricky was always a series that I expected or did uh, have a way fewer views than normal. So I was able to kind of talk maybe a little more loosely. Um, which, I mean, granted, I, I do try my best to be as genuine as possible. But, you know, when, when you're talking to... It, it's the same thing with real life, you know. In front of a crowd of 20 people versus with, like, five of your closest friends, you will talk differently. That's just that's just natural. And it's kind of nice to be bringing it back. And I realized I never did one on uh, PUBG. So I thought, oh, perfectly. Especially with it being so popular right now. And as people are... Oh, dear. What? I forgot. Well, you know, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna try our very best to uh to to drown out as much of the plane sound as we possibly can, because that is just one of the issues we do have with this. All right, everybody, let's all drop a pachinki, but let's not. Let's all just make one giant team. All right, this guy. I don't know this guy. All right, I'm I'm out of here. Goodbye. So, yeah. Anyway, though, off the cuff, like I said before. All, all live and such. I've done one. I, it used to be a big thing. Oh my god, there's a helicopter in the background. Um, I used to do as a big thing with Call of Duty Zombies. Now, COD Zombies is one of my favorite things in gaming, like, ever. I fucking love zombies. And because of that, I decided to, like, hey, you know, I want to play zombies. I want to, like, make zombies videos, but I'm not a zombies YouTuber. But I still want to make them. And so I decided, hey, we'll do Fireside Bricky. We went through, like, every single zombies map. And just kind of had conversation, got some deep talking. Uh, def Origins was the big one where I try to do a little bit more of a motivational thing, even though some of it might come off as a little bit weird. But I thought I did an okay job. I, I mean, you can only do so well with like a, a motivational conversation when it's completely off the cuff, you know. So anyway, of course, this is good old PUBG player unknown battle or player unknowns battlegrounds because technically it is being used in a um, possessive connotation it is his battleground now i am actually not very good at this game i have won two solo games in the history of ever there are a million and a half other major streamers and youtubers that are far better at this game than i am however the difference being is the fact that you know well Actually, there, there really isn't that much of a difference. I, I'm talking. I, I know it's Fireside Bricky. It's a series that some people really enjoy, and I'm happy to bring it back. I'm very happy to bring it back, actually. I might make one on some Nautica at some point later on, but it's a good it's a good video to make, you know? So, anywho... Oh, was that, was that a guy? No. Um, so, anywho, we're here with PUBG. And uh, now, for those of you who don't know what PUBG is, I mean, you should probably tell, you can probably tell what it is by now. If you don't know, it's basically like H1Z1 Battle Royale. If you don't know what that is, then, wow, I mean, I want to know what kind of bulletproof rock you're hiding under. Um, basically, it's any form of, like, Hunger Games-esque game. Uh, everyone, you know, comes down to one spot at one time, and they immediately get, 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 get. And then immediately tries to murder each other. As you can see in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's the amount of live we currently have. And I need to do my best to get as high as I possibly can on that list. Uh, if you win, you get nothing. Really. Some points. But that, that's pretty much it. But it doesn't really matter. Because it's still a pretty dang fun little game. And I am enjoying myself. This of course is an early access game. So take everything that you see here with a significant grain of salt. Uh, as I am probably going to be salty. There's a good chance that we won't really get very far in this game because I will most likely die at an excessive amount of times and not get excellent game footage. But so what? That's the whole point of Fireside Bricky. No cuts, long form commentary. Mistakes may be made, but because there's mistakes being made, it makes it seem more genuine. That's a scar. Hell yeah. Oh my god. I didn't realize that anything spawned in here like in the history of ever. 
Uh, okay, I'm gonna put a 4X on you, this angled grip, a nice little like uh, quick draw mag, and now we've got a scar. Uh, not the best with the 4X scope, but it's probably a lot better for like long ranging. Actually, I might get them, I'm put them the hollow sight for now because uh, I'm still gonna be looting these uh, houses over here and that's a pretty short range. But anywho, here we are with PUBG. Um, I actually was kind of thinking about what kind of topic I wanted to talk about for this one. Each of the kinds of topics I've had in Fireside Bricky generally get into more of a deeper level. Oh, shit. This is open. Uh-oh. Crap. These, uh, these don't spawn opened. Shit. That's open. Some stuff on the ground. Uh oh. Oh boy. Who's ready to get shot? Oh dear. Oh. I could have sworn he'd be in there. Uh oh. Around this corner? In here? Oh, don't do this to me, man. Oh, no. Don't do this to me. Ah, I'll take this over the hollow site. Oh, why you gotta be like this, man? This is not what I want. Mm. I'm actually gonna swap out my... Oh, that's a car. Oh, man. It's making its rounds. Oh, and out left. All right, sorry, little uh, little spooked there. Uh, with all these. Oh. My God. I pr I press map. I press map. I press map. I accidentally slammed on the map button and my controller was on my desk and vibrated a lot. I, oh, okay. Well, you know, this, this is a good start. This is, this is a, just, just this is a, a fantastic start. Uh, just, mmm. Mmm. Yes. Okay. I, w I warned you. I gave you fair and clear warning about what this kind of video was going to be like. I'm just, oh my god, I can't, how, I probably could have, okay, that grenade was, was fucking terrifying. But, uh, the, the pressing map, I don't, I don't even know, I think I got, got jump scared and slammed my M key. God damn it. Oh well, oh well. Anyway, topics, topics for this one. So, I wanted to think about some topics for this kind of video. And... Now, Fireside Bricky have kind of jumped around in topics. It depends. Like, like I remember, uh, was it Revelations? I think it was the zombie map Revelations, where I was talking about buying, uh, buying a house, like, like an actual, like, like escrow mortgage and shit. And that was back, and I actually finished buying the house back in late November. So it's been a while since Fireside Bricky has been extremely popular, or, or just being a thing that I've been doing in a while. But it was kind of nice because at the time, I, I think it was like maybe October when I made that video, I was like, whoa. Man, you have no idea how crazy this is. I can't believe this is happening. Like, I, I'm still, still kind of surreal. But now it's like it come so far. You know, I'm here. I've got roommates. Like everything's kind of just changed and stuff. And it feels so different. It feels so different. I don't feel much different personally, but the whole thing itself feels so different. I don't really know. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know. All right. Anyone hey. in the in the one on the plane want to say anything? Hmm? Hey there. Any, anyone? Hi. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello. I mean, they're the. Oh, China dear. China oh. Well, I mean, something's never changed, you know? China, number one. China will remain number one. Um, For today's topic, I actually had an interesting one. Uh, Not so much in the deep emotion level as any kind of the other topics. Like, I, I, what was that one? I, I think it was Gorod Krovi. I, I, ignore my Russian. I don't know how the hell you're supposed to pronounce that map, but that one zombie map I, I talked about um, uh, YouTuber and fan relations, uh, specifically about like the whole entitlement issue that people uh, that fans sometimes uh, bring up, and or fans have, 
and versus you know a youtuber's uh specific you know how much they supposed to like like oh quote unquote oh the fans like some people say like oh they owe you nothing or or they owe you everything and sometimes there's a middle ground and that was that was a big conversation i remember that conversation very well because i thought i thought i thought it was a good one i really that was just what the fuck um I thought it was a very good conversation making that video. It was kind of a touchy topic because uh, obviously, like with uh, with YouTube, you know, the fans make up the views, views make up ad revenue. But at the same time, you know, you can't like completely be blind and be like, oh, because I watch your videos, I therefore am the reason you bought this house or car or new monitor. I owe I own you kind of thing because that's just fucking dumb and entitled as as shit. Um, and then, of course, the other thing was like, well, yes, technically, I could not do YouTube without the fan base, and I, I, lo I fucking love my fan base, but at the same time, I don't like entitlement. It's a big issue. It was a, it was a huge conversation, I think. I think I think I ended up saying that uh, it's a 50-50 thing, where, like, 50% of it is the fans, 50% of it is the YouTuber, because guess what? If I... Oh, hell yeah, Car98. Guess what? If I chose to never make uh, YouTube videos ever again, then, I mean... You know, sucks. I, I I wouldn't be getting like any form of uh, any kind of views on my. Uh, let's go with a vertical. If I if I decide to go ahead and be like, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make a make video, or if I don't make videos, I don't get views, and you know, no one can really do anything about it. If I want to go ahead and just stop making videos, I don't want to stop making videos. Cause I fucking love videos, but. You know, it's just one of those things where it's like it's a back it's a back and forth kind of thing. But you know, like yeah, I'm the I am the one who to like slaves over and over again to make videos and produce content that is free for everybody. And uh, because you watch it, then I get paid for it. It's a fifty fifty thing, you know. You wouldn't have the opportunity to watch it if I didn't make it. You know, I I work my ass off, so I think I should deserve some of the credit. And the fact that you watch it, you are you are my loyal customers. And therefore, I uh, need to obviously respect you, like any kind of business owner should. That's that's the best way I would put it. I think it's a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid way to go about things. You know, treat uh, treat each other like humans. None of this uh, dance monkey dance kind of thing that I see happen so often with uh, streamers. Actually, nowadays with streamers, it's actually pretty ridiculous how many, but just the kind of blatant um, uh, kind of shitting on that I see that streamers have to deal with. So often, I notice it a lot more. Obviously, because I do stream as well. My, my fan base is pretty solid, and we kind of just get rid of anyone who's an asshole. It's like, it's like Bricky. I, I'm not gonna watch unless you play X game. I'm like, okay, bye, and then I like remove them. And it's actually pretty funny because it's one of those like <laughs> you got no power here moments. But you know, it's I see it a lot more nowadays in uh in streaming and stuff, but. In YouTube, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I think I got a, a solid enough fan base who's who's decently intelligent enough that knows that anything like any kind of dance monkey dance thing is it ain't ain't cool. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. I want to talk about something else, and I want to talk about wow, shit, dude, giving me some good stuff. Should I take the SKS over the Car 90? Actually, you know what? I think they said they buffed the Car 98, so I'm actually going to keep the Car 98 over the SKS this time around. But anyway, I wanted to talk more about, I guess it's kind of talking about sponsorships, but in a sense, it's kind of not. It's more so discussing uh, morality in the situation. Um, so the best way I, I can start this off is uh, like morals, Eth ethical morals when it comes to sponsorships. Now, of, now, obviously, YouTube is a very fickle business. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And because of that, uh, the whole, um, like, uh, finances on YouTube, especially with, like, the ad boycott recently, went up and down and actually could cause some problems. Which is why so many people are moving to Twitch nowadays, because with Twitch, you've got consistent, or not maybe a consistent income, but more, I guess maybe more reliable. Um, now, YouTube, of course, is a consistent amount of income once you have enough videos out that people will, like, you know, because nowadays people are still watching, say, So You Wanna Man Yasuo, so I'm still getting those views. But, um, you know, it's obviously not as many as when it was uploaded, but you get the point. 
uh, Twitch. Twitch is 100% fan interaction. Uh, subs and donations are all based on fans. Those are the two largest amounts of income. Bits are technically fans as well. Uh, the only thing that isn't are ads, and ads kind of suck on Twitch. Ads on YouTube are fine because you're not like just tuning into something. It's like if you swap if you swap channels every single time, and like there was an ad every time you change channels, that would kind of suck, you know. But when it's YouTube, it's obviously a bit different because it's not... Ooh, it's SMG suppressor. It's obviously different because you're, you're going to view something and the ads, of course, are no longer... No, we're near as bad as TV. So, that's just, you know, its own little thing. Um, no one ever run... Uh, and you lose viewers, you know, and you lose audience. And that that those are potential, like, uh, people like... Yeah, I mean, those are viewers. It's potential people. Like, you know, it's potential new people that could be jumping into your stream. And that, that's, you know, you don't want to lose that. Um, but anyway, I'm, uh, like I said, get off topic a lot. I, I say that a lot because I get off topic a fuckload. But anyway, as I was saying, um, if sponsor and so because of that, sponsorships themselves are a very solid piece of income if you need that extra little bit of income. Um, it's, it's more, it's not really like stable in the sense of you're not going to have it recurring very often unless you have a specific kind of deal. But if someone says like, Hey, we'll pay you X amount of money. If you talk about our stuff before the video, then you know, like it, it's straight cut and dry. You will get this for this. It's not about how many people watch it. It's not about how many, uh, uh how many people watch the ads, uh, how many people watch ad block. It's just like, this is how many, this is what's going to be done and done. Which is obviously a very good thing. It's why YouTubers take sponsorships so often. is because that, that is very useful and very important. Um, when you have sponsorships like this, it's very, it's very useful for being able to kind of have that little buffer. You know, everyone likes a buffer, especially when it comes to any kind of bills you got to pay. You know, let's say in total, all the bills together cost you like $2,000 a month, which is... You know, if you're talking about like maybe say rent and uh, you know, maybe car, gas, insurance, electric, phone, whatever, everything stacks up. Let's say two thousand. You know, it's kind of nice to be able to make like let's say two thousand like five hundred from your job, and then like you get, like an extra like cool little deal that gives you an extra five hundred um, that month. It's like it's like a nice little buffer, you know, a little patter, just to make sure nothing goes wrong. Actually, I'm in Razak. Uh oh, fuck. But of course, then you got the morality situation. Now, YouTubers, especially I think of myself, where I, I try to be more of a personality than a specific kind of game, uh, or like a game-based person. I don't run a news network. I'm not a commentator. I just make videos that I think are funny or at least informational or fun. Um, fu fun, I guess, is the main thing. But of course, comedy is a big deal. But um, fun would be the big word. And I make those videos, and I just produce them. And that, that really is, is the end of, was that thunder or was that a grenade? I don't know. I'm scared. Um, and that's pretty much the end of it, you know. Now, uh, so, but because of that, though, people rely a lot on me for a personality because as a personality, or trying to be a personality YouTuber, it's not just cut and dry. Like, what's a oh, great example? Philip DeFranco, right? Now, I'm, I'm sure most, many of you know Philip DeFranco. If you don't know him, he runs a news network on YouTube or trying to do one off YouTube. But he's, uh, I've always found him to be a very solid YouTuber. His editing is very good. His conversational topics are very good. And while he definitely has his bias on topics and political things, he presents them in enough of a fact and he kind of like segues the bias. So he's not kind of, seen, he doesn't seem like he's skewing it. And I like that. Um, with that being said, uh, good. Um, he kind of has like a new shirt, I think, either every week or maybe even every video. I don't quite remember, but all these new shirt designs that he comes out with like super often. And for me, unless I be may become like a staple of the channel, telling you to go buy a new shirt every single video would probably not fly because it's just, it, it's just maybe too much for you. Maybe it's too many, too many advertisements. And I totally get that. That guy sees me. That guy fucking sees me. Oh my god. I could have sworn that guy was a bush. Fuck. Woo! I could have sworn that guy was a bush. The bushes mess with me so often, man. Car 98 still two shots to the body. Nice. Very nice. Poor guy. Oh, he also had a car 98. Oh, I was playing with fire. Oh, man. He was gonna... D oh, I'll take your pan. Thank you. Kind of like this ballistic mask, too. But 
Oh, I was playing with some serious fire. He was probably lining up a shot just as well. Damn. Anyway, new shirt uh, every day probably would get annoying. Or for some of you. For him, it's a staple. It's a standard thing. You know, people like his shirts. He's got a ton of subs. It works out. And it provides him that extra income that is, of course, important because he gets demonetized so often. Stop moving, please. Oh shit. This is scary. I might die. I think he has a shotgun. Got him. Thank you, silencer. That was a little bit spooky, actually. That was actually very spooky. Oh my god, he had level 3 helmets. Oh, I am a lucky man. Uh, he had pretty garbage ammo for his, uh, f for his scar, though. I would love to take his scar away from him. But, uh, he just has, like, no ammo for the thing, so I'm just gonna take that and, uh, leave it. Oh. My. God. Fucking damn. I saw him when I was- oh, oh. I cannot believe that just happened. Must have been someone running from the zone. I didn't even notice him. Holy shit. Holy- Oh, oh my, I just realized, I think my suppressed silenced, uh, SMG probably saved my life. Because they didn't hear my gunshot, so he wasn't gonna be all scared. Okay, wow, I played with some serious fire. Um, normally I would get rid of this SMG, but I like the silencer. And I think I'd keep, I'll keep it over the 5.5, five, five, eh. Nah. I'm gonna get rid of it. Only because I love the scar just too much. And that guy had extra ammo. Yeah. We'll take that. Ooh, scary. Maybe I'll find a uh, an AR suppressor later on. Probably not, but the possibilities are of course there. Fuck you, wall. So, anyway, then it comes down for that whole thing with morals. Now, um, like... Oh, wow. Do I have the time to go fuck with those guys over there? Nah, fuck them. Um, comes down to morals. And one of the things that I've always said is uh, the definition of, a, of someone who actually is selling out, who's an actual sellout, is lying to their fan base about a product that they don't actually like and saying that they like it. If I were to jump onto some kind of mobile game and be like, yeah, this is the new hit thing. This is the new Angry Birds and it's some like League of Legends ripoff kind of game. Like, then I'm kind of being, I'm kind of selling out a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm practically lying, you know, and I don't like that. Now, that, that's a natural thing, you know. Now, if I get like seven new sponsorships, one every single day of the week, it may be overwhelming. Sure, of course, to totally understandable. However, if I like all of them, I'm not really selling out. I'm just taking a lot of sponsorships that might clutter up a lot of time. If I made like one was like a Hy Hyper X, the headphones, and I because I, I wear those headphones right now and I really like them, and ver and then like the other one is um, Mercy butt pads as a sponsorship, and then one of them is frying pans because of the PUBG thing, and you know the whole deal. I'm not selling out. But I'm I'm doing a hell of a lot of sponsorships that may come off as as pretty annoying, which is just you know that's that's totally fine, you know I mean commercials, whether or not they believe in the commercials or not, can be a pain in the butt. Wait, did I? Is that my buggy? I thought I parked my buggy over here. Uh oh. Hot diggity damn. Doug Dimodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimodome. Well, Dimadam. Wait, did he have an M249? No, he had an S12K. Oh man, you were showing some crazy shit there. I was a little bit worried. I don't need these 9mm rounds anymore, so I'll just. 
I thought I heard... Ah, there it goes. I did, but it's not that bad. Okay, I think we're all right. All right, cool beans, cool beans. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's the whole thing. But then I was... I, I, a, a dilemma was... Oh, fucking... Ah, oh, damn. Doug Dimadam. Speak, speaking of dilemma, right? Ah, too bad. 34. Got four kills, though. That's not too bad. Just, you know, got... I Probably my fault. I was super out in the open. Probably shouldn't have done that, but... Oh, well. That was a solid game. Way better than the first one. At least I wasn't stepping on the map. Or opening up the map. Um, so then I came with this one dilemma, right? So, in a sense... Like, let's say I do get an offer for one of those mobile games. Let's say one of those mobile games becomes really, really, like, uh, um, or really, like, maybe not big, but, okay, so a lot of times China likes to push mobile games. And so sometimes when you see people, like, like big YouTubers doing a, a mobile game that looks so obviously shitty, it's normally backed by some kind of Chinese company that most of the time offers, like, upwards of, oh, in, in the five-figure region. They offer those giant YouTubers, like, the, in the, probably around the five-figure regions uh, really to go ahead and, um, like, promote it. And in a sense, you have to kind of look back and think about this, right? So let's say, um, oh, what's a good example? So let, let's say, let's say, now this, this, this number is totally not indicative of what my, uh, of what I would get offered. This is, this is way more money than I'd ever get offered, but let's go ahead and use this as an example. Let's say I got a mobile game sent, uh, or uh, someone asked me to do a mobile game or cover it for a video, like a five minute video about this mobile game. Um, and the mobile game is kind of meh, you know, I mean, maybe I could still have fun with it, but the game is kind of meh. Um, actually, a great example. I'm not a huge fan of the new Friday the 13th game, personally. Not just not a huge fan of the game. I say it's not worth 40 bucks, but I've gotten $40. Oh Thank my god. Serious social commentary. Yeah, that's that, uh, that's that does, anybody know, uh, does anybody know what song, um, what saying, get a mic anybody know that one song called... This is terrifying. I'm proud to be black. Black is beautiful, bitch. I'm out of there. Um, God damn it. Um, so let's say I uh, Friday the 13th game. So I don't think it's worth forty dollars personally. That's my personal opinion, you know. But at the same time, I did get forty dollars worth of laughs out of it by watching it on like streams and stuff. Like, yeah, that game can be funny as hell. And really be fun if you like that kind of stuff, but I don't think it's worth $40 in a sense, you know? So, anyway, so maybe, maybe like, I play this, this crappy mobile game. That crappy as it may be, I still have fun, you know? I still have fun with it. I still just enjoy myself. It's terrible, sure, but I, you know, I laugh it up with my friends. You know, we have a good time together, even though the game itself is not very good. And... You know, the company, let's say the company, the Chinese company that offers it is like, gives me some stupidly ridiculous number. Like, like I said before, I probably never ever get offered this, but for the, the sake of example, they offer me like, fuck, I don't know, like 25 grand. We'll go with that. 25 grand. Totally fucking stupid. No way in hell will, it, will they ever offer me that. At least not until I'm like at a million subs, maybe. But some, some dumbly large number, you know? Something like that. Let's say they offer me that. So the first thought is, okay, this is not a game that looks good. This is not a game that I would enjoy to cover. Or maybe, maybe, I, maybe I could enjoy it still, but, you know, like I said, it's not something that I would want to recommend. And because of that, the first thought is, well, don't really want to cover it because of that. Then you have to think of it from a more, uh, uh, from, a, from a greedier perspective. And maybe not greedy. I use greedy as a joke. But um, uh, from another perspective where it's like, well, this is one video. A single one. Five minutes. Five minutes. And of those five minutes, like, you don't even have to watch it. You can, you can click the video and be like, oh, this is some crappy advertisement. And then close the video. You know? And then, then you've wasted like maybe 10 seconds of your life. At the most. It's a, it's affected you none. It has affected you zero. And then you come down to the thoughts of like, okay, well, maybe the video is still funny. Maybe like I, I tried my best to make it funny even though I didn't really like the game. And then you go into like the whole 
Well, if they, you know, people may not like it, but in sense that is just one. Whoa, I think someone just level firework outside. Goddamn. Um, it is just one video of ever. I've never covered a single mobile game of like the 400 something videos that I currently have on my channel. That is a single one. You know, if my record is, wow, God damn, there is a lot here. If my record is one out of 400 is an annoying ass mobile game. Uh, I think I think you can I think I think you can like like understand that, and then you think of it from the other perspective where it's like, well, shit, like twenty five k. If that was actually offered to me, if that was actually offered to me, I mean, that's like months, months of bills paid for. That's months of of stuff that I nor would normally have to like. You know, that's months of not having to go paycheck by paycheck. That's months of not, of like having a massive buffer. That is months of time that I, that I can be, um, not used, but a month of time and a buffer that I could like have from this, that stress off my back, that that could be some crazy new things. That could be new stuff. That could be a better camera or studio lights or, um, acoustic paneling. Or new uh, new monitors and keyboards or microphone, things that will actually benefit the uh, the the like stream and videos themselves. And then you think of other things like, well, let's say you buy all of those new equipment. Now it probably won't cost you twenty five grand. It most definitely will not. But then you think, oh, well, well, maybe this is a new like like that's remodeling like a kitchen. Perhaps like maybe I want to remodel the kitchen or something and I'm like, oh, that's the entire project with a five minute video or that is maybe I can like put some money down on some new, uh, I don't know, maybe like my, my car is getting pretty goddamn old. Like it's like it's like 11 years now, 10 or 12 years, maybe um, it's like that's like down to a whole new thing for some five minute video, you know, it's don't growl at me. It's things like that, where when you think about it from the from the outside, like, huh, that's that, that may, may seem kind of dick. But when you think about it like a little bit more closely, and you think about it in this way, like all of this is just done from one quick like video, then you start to have this other perspective on the matter. Now, I'm not being offered 25 grand to do anything, so you won't expect this from me anytime soon at all. But it's kind of like a, a new perspective that I take on it when, Oh, Hey, maybe this is, you know, you know, maybe, maybe I just take that small PR hit, take that small, like ethical hit just because you can get so much of a bonus out of it. Oh my God. What the fuck did he get here? Ah, shit. He killed me. Dang. I didn't even notice that guy. I just got the I just got fucking jumped on, man. That ain't cool. But you know, you take that small hit, and then the whole and then like it's just over. One video out of four hundred done, zero zilch, and then you can just get that massive benefit for it. Now, like you know, I'm not gonna get this anytime soon, so that's not gonna be happening anytime soon. But it kind of got me thinking, you know. It really got me thinking about all the things that could be done, all the things that could be changed or fixed or built or anything with that with that giant ridiculously stupidly large sum of money you know that those are the things that hell i'd probably just put it towards in savings and, and probably it, honestly if i did get offered all that i would probably buy like some new monitors uh because these monitors are not matching and old and i'd probably go ahead and put the rest of the money towards savings in an attempt to refinance my home later down the line and get a smaller monthly payment so it's not so much of like a looming like ooh this is a scary mortgage kind of thing you know it's probably like what I would do with that money but like that's that's it's dumb it's like it's a dumb sum of money and then, then you know people would do far far less in a video uh, or sorry so not far less far more than just a 5 minute video of a games with friends commentary for that that much people would do way 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 more and like, like I said, this this number figure isn't what I would be ever ever asked for. But the the really huge people, yeah, they probably get that stuff because China really likes to push their mobile games, and they probably would get something similar to that number. Uh, the really 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 huge people, I mean. And so you kind of have to like look at it from the other side of the coin. Like, yeah, maybe it's annoying and stuff, but fuck, man, you you get so much out of it by just doing that, by just doing that one.
that single thing like if you look like if I asked you hey would you do it I'm pretty sure 95% of you would say hell yeah hell yeah you would do it so you know it's a sign to think about and then then when I was thinking about that whole thing I got into a separate topic which was a a, a whole separate thing which of course like the the main sponsorship we have I have right now which is the uh, obviously which is loot crate and we always we mean about loot crate a hell of a lot. No, we okay. always we meme about Loot Crate for hours upon hours, videos okay. upon videos. Shut up. You know it's good. To, wow, that was rude. Uh, it's just it's good to like have a good laugh about that kind of thing because then you know it, it's just it's just silly. Shameless promotion has always been a funny little little meme, and the fact that you can I can do it so often right now it's a, it's a good thing. When you can incorporate shameless promotion into a joke, I think it's always a great idea because you get the best of both worlds. But one of the things that I noticed is uh, a few, maybe like a couple weeks ago, I took, or maybe it was a couple months ago, I took a trip to North Carolina, uh, to Raleigh, and uh, and when I went to Raleigh, I did it for an event with Boss Key Productions, uh, the production team headed by Cliff Blazinski, uh, old um, video game developer from uh, Gears of War and shit like that. I'm sure some of you recognize the name. Uh, making their new game, Lawbreakers, a game that I have done a couple things for in the past that I very much enjoy, really have a good time with it. Super fucking hard game. Like, like wow, is it difficult. Uh, but it's, you know, a hell of a lot of fun, crazy shooter, and uh, I definitely enjoy myself uh, when, I, when I play it, that is. And that guy's going to shoot me, isn't he? That's not like a grenade. Oh, this person. Come here, you! I shall stabbeth thee! I shall stabbeth thee! Your ass is grass! Is it? I, it's fucking hyena, holy shit. You! Come with me! I stabbeth thee! Thy ass is grass! Holy shit, I hate the melee in this game. How the hell do you get in front of me? Person does not sound like a goddamn hyena. Are you serious with me right now? Oh my god. Okay, this is this is getting dumb. Thank you. That was easily the stupidest thing I have seen all day. That was... Wow, that was dumb. Wow, that was dumb. Okay. Um... Fuck. What was I talking about again? Um... Uh, Lawbreakers, right. So... I do believe that the production team behind Lawbreakers is Nexon Studios. And... I never heard of them before. I never did. I just... You know, they were like, okay, that's, that's the production company. Alright, good to know. And so they invited me on, they did all this kind of cool stuff with it, but I never, like I said, I never knew who they were. Um, with that being said, I eventually, uh, when I make that video, well, let me back this up. They've always been super damn chill. Uh, they, you know, they invited me out to the places. They, they was like, it was like the whole open bar thing, fun times, cool shenanigans all around. Oh, there's, gun, there's gunfire. Everything was good. Everything is good. They treat me extremely well, and that's what matters to me. You know, like sometimes you can you can figure out the worth of a company uh, by how well they treat like their clients. And I guess I, since I'm like an influencer, you know, get those buzzwords going. Um, I am a client, and I guess when they invite me out to make a little video on the whole thing, and you know, yada yada yada. I since then making the video. Uh, that guy's got a gun. He definitely sees me. Shit. Please have a gun. Please have a gun. Okay. All right, everyone. You ready? This is going to be the coolest fucking thing you've ever witnessed. He sees me. And I don't know if he knows that I see him, but uh, he's behind that tree over there. Two can, wait th two can play this game, buddy. Two can play this game. Actually, should I, like, make a beeline? I'm going to make a beeline back here. Yeah, I know you see me. I know you see me. <laughs> okay, 
Here we go. Here we go. We're going to stun grenade him and then use the machete. Oh, there he goes. Here he goes. Oh, he's running that direction. Alas thee, for we shall fight machete to gun. Oh fuck. It didn't work. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work. God damn. Okay, one 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 more match. <laughs> one more match. Um that was that was funny. Um So anyway, I, once I made the video, um I got a couple comments, some less than kind comments, about the whole working with Nexon Studios thing. And I talked to some of my friends, and apparently they have a little bit of a bad pay-to-win reputation with some Korean MMORPGs or MMOs or something like that. I don't remember. But they had a very um, them-first, consumer-second stance for a while. And actually gave the company a pretty goddamn bad name and bad PR for a very long time. Now, I had, like I said, never heard them before in my life. Never did. And the only experiences I ever had with them had been solidly pleasant. Very fun, very good. The people I met seemed all extremely nice. I liked them. They treated me, and they tre tre treated me well. They, they just, they simply treated me well. And that made me extremely happy. So, I was totally cool with to, work, to work with them for like a long ass time because, I mean, you know, I never heard them before. And I mean, if I had heard about their like poor business practices beforehand, I may, I may have still worked with them because I never had the opportunity beforehand. But I may not have like, you know, agreed to go ahead and like make a video saying sponsored by them at the time. Now I have no issue making it, uh, making a video like that because they've only been nice. They've only had good experiences and it can really change up the way of a person's perspective like i remember there were some issues well i'll say well a good a good example again if no one starts talking in this plan is the loot crate like i have never once been treated poorly by a single loot crate in oh boy there it goes shut up dang dude he told him this is your captain speaking get off of my flight a lot of people actually got off of the flight. Yeah, you. They're never in the back. Get off. Am I in the Get back? The fuck up. I'm Shut not in the back. you fucking bitch. I'll put my nuts on your forehead. Okay, we're going out of this one. Um, I have never had a single bad uh, issue, or a single issue with, with the Loot Crate people. They've only treated me well. In fact, I uh, actually went to an event uh, two days ago. Uh, technically yesterday, but two days ago, um, where I actually, where I, it was like a, like a, a premiere, like, boat thing in Marina Del Rey in LA, where they were showing, uh, our fu Funimation. My Loot Crate guy is friends with Funimation, and they were showing their dubbed version of Black Butler, Book of the Atlantic anime on this, like, little boat thing. And he's like, yeah, come along. And so he, myself and a friend of mine came along and we watched the thing and we had like, you know, we had free food and drinks and big old like, and like premiere for an anime and stuff. And I gotta be honest, the anime wasn't terrible. I thought it was actually pretty okay. I, uh, I wasn't sure what to think about it originally, but uh, I thought it was actually pretty good. I, I mean, it was, uh, it was definitely interesting. Definitely interesting, but I, I expected to be like, eh, because, you know, anime and me don't really go together, but I was, I was thoroughly impressed. So... Yay me. Yay them. And, uh, so, I mean, like, that's just, that's just some bro tier level shit. You know? He's just like, yeah, come along, have fun. I'm like, fuck, yeah, I will. Did I miss all of those? This only has eight shots. How the fuck am I missing these shots? That was the worst fight I have ever been in. GG. I don't think either of us could have been worse in that situation. I don't, I don't think either of us could have had a, a worse... Wow, level 3 military vest. Could have had a worse time in that fight. That was the stoop... Oh my god. Um, 
Wow. Um, so, yeah, that's some, like, re oh, by the way, that, that one character, I forget the name, the, like, the Reaper character with, like, the red hair, and that's, like, really, really flamboyant, that has, uh, the, the chainsaw. Yeah, that person's pretty cool. Pretty funny, actually. I don't know, I thought that person was pretty neat. But, um, besides that, besides that, uh, overall, like, you know, it's just, why, why would I ever, like, like, if, if they had maybe some poor reputation in the past, sure, I can understand that, but if I'm not experiencing it and I've only been treated well, then I really shouldn't, like, give them too much shit for it. Uh, or I really shouldn't, like, give them shit because, like, that's just, like, I've, no, in my experience, things have been good. And it's kind of hard to have, like, that back and forth thing where, like, you want to work with someone, but, like, the reputation may be kind of soiled, and then you, like, kind of try to tell them they're not that bad, and then, you know, you have that issue, but... I don't know. I've oh, most people seem to only have had good experiences with loot crate. I know there may have been one or two issues in the past with other content creators, but as far as I'm concerned, I only know of good when it comes to uh, to the loot crate stuff. And of course, as a meme, it's always great. I mean, I work with them on a commission based system anyway, so I, they don't actually like pay me like a flat thing to advertise. I actually um, do well when people like actually purchase it. So uh, I mean, I've all, people have. Um, I've asked before, and I always say, you know, if you ever want to know the absolute number one best way to support me as a content creator besides just watching videos, like, literally, lootcrate.com slash bricky, promo code bricky. The link is the most important part, because that's what tracks, but the commission is is far more than you'd ever, than you'd, uh, than you could, like, or, I get, like, a certain commission each time, but I have, like, benchmarks, and those benchmarks are like where the where the big stuff is and that really helps me out it really does and uh so you ever wonder that's the way that is that is the way so yeah that is the number one best way to support me and uh always always is happy to have that so i mean it's just it's just a good time i like the product i think it's good and so i don't know it's like i don't know what prompted this discussion today but uh it just i don't know i want to talk about it a little bit maybe because now that i'm starting to grow as a youtuber i'm getting more and more uh requests pe people like uh asking me to sponsor stuff or be a, spo a sponsee uh for different kinds of products and with more and more things coming out and the larger you grow as a youtuber the larger that that check becomes at the end and so therefore the uh, the one to turn it down for moral ethical or perhaps just don't really feel like it reasons becomes smaller and smaller as time goes on uh, that's the best way i can explain it at least anywho uh, that that was the main t topic i wanted to uh to talk about today it was mainly a sponsorship thing um i don't know why i chose pubg but i did um yeah, it's PUBG. Uh, oh, I mean, P PUBG actually was kind of one of them. There were a lot of sponsors for PUBG. When it originally, I think, came out or was coming out, there were a lot of people with early access codes playing this game. So it probably was one of the reasons why. I don't have a backpack. I could have sworn I picked up a backpack. Shit. Um, but, yeah. Uh, that's kind of one of the reasons. Early access game, you know, people sponsoring early access games. And actually, I was kind of impressed with how uh, PUBG is doing with their, uh, with how like how well they're doing with their sales and, and and especially on Twitch. I honestly expected the game to have died out by now on Twitch, and it's still like top four or something, which is pretty ridiculous for a game like this. Um, very impressed with their. Uh, I must have upped the Car 98 spawns. Uh, very impressed with how often uh, they're updating the game. Uh, they seem to have a very clear-cut program going on, a very clear-cut objective, and that is something you don't see very often in early access games, and it is incredibly appreciated that they're like, hey, we're going to add this new gun now, and then this new thing over here now, and it's just, it's good to see that. You don't see it very often, and it's very good to see that now. Um, but... I mean, actually, so far, I really enjoy PUBG. I think it's a very fun game. I'm terrible at it. It's got some issues. The only, the only thing that I prefer H1Z1 for over PUBG... Well, I prefer PUBG over H1Z1, naturally. But if there's anything to uh, say that I'd prefer over um, uh, PUBG, with H1Z1 over PUBG is the uh, UI. I think the UI is better. Uh, I just think it's more... I like, the, I like the increased colors and stuff. And I also like the more archaic style of H1Z1. PUBG is going for a much more serious vibe. 
Um, I mean, maybe not a serious vibe, but not as colorful and loud and stuff as H1Z1 is. A little bit more. It's going for a little bit more of a tactical vibe, and I kind of like uh, H1Z1's more robust. Um, uh, like you know, you can just run it like run at them with a car. And just take that car and, and try to smash into them and then jump out going at Mach 5 and then like shotgun them. Like, I, unrealistic as hell, but kind of fun. You know, I kind of miss being able to jump out of a car willy nilly in this game and, and being able to just gun someone down. But I understand it. And I mean, some of the issues I have is like, you know, it still ends up being Pringles. It still ends up being kind of like that game where you like you pop out behind trees like this. Uh, and I kind of like the H1Z1 version where you can kind of like jump and like kind of throw them off. But you really can't do that in this game because of how terrible the jump is and how kind of more clunkier it is. Uh, but that is just one of the uh, one of the gripes. Besides that, I think this game is much stronger, and the development cycle seems like it's doing a much much better job. I understand why people wouldn't want or would uh, like the other over this one, but you know, personal preference is a thing that exists. But yeah, this is uh, this has mainly been fireside bricky. This is uh, kind of what we do here. Have conversations like this and just talk and then move along. Talk and then move along. Talk and then discuss something else or something new. And then uh, have a different kind of um, this conversation on the next video. And when the next Fireside Bricky will be, I have no idea. Oh, damn. That's coming from right over there. I have no idea when I'm going to make the next Fireside Bricky. Could be a while. Uh, but, you know, it depends on what kind of game I want to do. What game I want to play. You're kidding me, right? Bye. Huh. <laughs> this guy a level uh level three backpack. I mean pistol suppressor will always be acceptable. Take you two. Yeah, he did. And a level two helmet. Hell yeah. Oh man, a lot more of these rounds too. Uh probably going to take off all of this. And go ahead and snag his M16. I uh, might die here because I'm totally out in the open and uh, completely 100% very exposed. But uh, I mean, it's like my parents always used to say, Taylor, just whip that dick out. They they didn't they didn't actually say that. It it was a meme. It was just a meme. It was only a meme. Where am I in the safe zone? Oh, I am in the safe zone. Oh, good. That's good. That could have been very bad. I just realized I never checked the safe zone. That would have been exceptionally, exceptionally bad. Ugh. Car 98, man. I, I think I tried to lead that shot a little bit too much. That UAS wasn't there originally, was it? That UAS was the one the guy was driving, wasn't it? It probably was. And if it wasn't, well... Actually, I can't look too high on this hill. You know, I actually was quite surprised with that anime I watched on that boat. Book of the Atlantic. I don't know. I like the concept. Old, like, I think it was London. Or old, like, Victorian-style era with, uh, sells his soul to the butler kind of thing. I don't know. That was a very neat concept. I liked it. I liked the idea. You know, unique is something that I, I always enjoy. And I, unique is something that I see in anime a lot. Anime very often. One thing that definitely has going forward is its uniqueness. There are... Plenty of extremely interesting, very new concepts that come out of anime. Death Note's a great one. Death Note's a fantastic one. Uh, very, very good uh, ideas going on there. I need to go ahead and find out where those gunshots came from over here. Thank God for burst fire mode. Give me a little bit of that edge in combat, but if I can find the guy can't find the guy, then what good is it? You know, I've never actually traveled to the top of one of these towers before. I don't know if you can actually get to them. They seem to be kind of, uh, difficult to reach. Never mind. I, uh... I am extremely exposed right now. You used to be able to climb towers, or you can climb towers back in, uh, DayZ. And, uh, this was always the most terrifying thing, was, uh, climbing the tower like this. Because you're just like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Can I climb even higher? Nah. You know, this is actually a pretty amazing vantage point when you think about it. Like, this is kind of incredible. 
you, you can just like hide behind one of these things to, to give you the cover that you need. Why does no one go up here? Do people ever go up here? I never see anyone up here. I mean, it's never been fired upon, but your 360 degree view is extraordinary. And the ability to use things like 4X scopes, like I imagine if you get an 8X scope, going up one of these would be just a field day. I wonder. I don't feel that bad because I'm not camping uh, with a shotgun, I'm camping with a sniper rifle. And, and I mean, hey man, you know, camping with a sniper rifle, that's, that's just called sniping. That's just called sniping. You don't got quick scope in every game you play in. Camping with a sniper rifle is just called sniping. Man, real snipers in real life stay in one spot for fucking hours, days, before they actually take their target. You know? These bushes keep getting me. I keep thinking someone's in the bush and they never are. I am a little bit exposed though, I will I will say that. Definitely definitely the truth. I am a tad bit a tad bit exposed up here. Little uh little worried about what exactly? Let's see. see, it looks like a person, man. These bushes look like people, and they're not people, but I think they're people. And I'm I'm probably just gonna stay here until the safe zone uh, closes back in on me, and then uh, oh my, oh yeah, I forgot. I thought I almost fell off the entire edge. That would be, that would really suck. Huh? What if you, nah, you probably can't get up there. Those are smokestacks. Man, imagine if you could get up those. That'd be something. Can Can you even climb ladders in this game? I haven't played this game enough to actually determine if I could climb ladders in this game. Oh, there go all those people outside the play zone. That's a car. I think I just heard a car. Did I, did I not just hear a car? Oh. You are... Oh, maybe it was a plane. Well, there is that plane over there, but... Uh... I don't know if that car was the car I heard or if I was just hear hearing some kind of thunder. If that was the car, then I imagine I'd see the guy walking around this compound very soon. The play area gets restricted in 30 seconds. See, here's the only downside of being up here. Once the play area moves, I am going to need to skedaddle the fuck out of here. Because that is a long winding staircase beneath me. And not only is that scary in itself, but also the a simple fact that I will be completely exposed on the way down and the time it'll take for me to leave is of course frightening. I mean, hey man, I you know, I may not Oh, there he is. That how the fuck did I miss that? I could have sworn that was a perfect shot. All right. Now we just wait for him to go to the car. I can't. Ah, shit. Ah, shit. Where'd you go? Old buddy, old pal. There it goes. That's a hit. Oh shit, that's gunfire way in the distance. God, how am I missing these shots? Ah, oh, do I have any? I don't have any grenades either. Fuck. He's probably very curious where the hell I am. I don't think he's noticed me whatsoever. I mean, the sound of this game is already kind of fucked. So it's really hard to tell where people are firing at you from. So, I feel for him. This is a perfect shot. But... If he does see me, I've got a little bit of bandages and first aid kits and stuff I can use. I've got plenty of time before the safe zone moves. So long as the safe zone isn't here when I go, I'll be okay. And of course, so long as no one else sees me. The one thing I'm more curious about is if he's actually going to go for his car. Well, see, here's the, if the safe zone moves... Will he attempt to go for his car? Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? 
You have no idea how tilted I am. I hate this game sometimes. Early access. Early access. Remember, Bricky, early access. You gotta accept it. I'm still in the safe zone. Oh, hell yes. I'm actually in a really good spot, too. Thank God I took all this ammo. So when I miss all of my goddamn shots, I'm not going to be that terrible. And this game is lasting longer than I expected. Probably because I've done nothing. Part of me kind of wants to get really close to the winning this game. So if I actually, like, can get a single win, that'd be, that just, it'd be crazy happy. It'd be very happy. Um, uh, but... That's a, that's a big maybe. I, I still don't think he knows that I, where I am. I think he may have just heard the shot and then, like, got spooked and left. Come to think of it, if the safe zone ends over in that direction, then I wonder if I'll be seeing people arriving from here or in anywhere in this area. I still don't see our guy. He's down there. If I see anyone else actually try and show up to kill him, I might, or if I see anyone else just show up naturally, I might just let them. If I see anyone like run down in that neighborhood, I might just let them go there because then he'll assume that the person who, who's attacking him is me. And then either he kills them, therefore, you know, he'll be thinking he's safe again, or his buddy, or he'll die, and then the other person won't know of my, uh, won't know of my existence. Oh, that sounds like gunshots from way over there. Oh man, that's probably gonna be a hairy fight. M416, someone's gotta kill with. Yeah, this guy. I really wish they had first person servers. Man, this game would be so much more intense and fun if it was first person. Just all that extra visual advantage you can get. It's, not a fan. I use it myself, obviously, because I have to, but... Like, I just... I wish it was all first person. I think there are some servers that can only be first person. Or, uh, certain servers that are, um... Only, uh... uh how you say? Like, 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 custom servers you can make that are only first person. But that that's a... That's a different thing. That is a different thing. Oh. I heard more gunfire. Don't you just love this uh, winning strategy right here? Don't you just love watching me camp up here for like 10 minutes? Isn't it just so exhilarating? I know, right? It's almost like this is the way you have to play to win PUBG. Ugh. Going for kills never wins anymore. Unless you're someone, someone like Josh OG or Summit, who just for some goddamn reason are able to kill everybody all the time while actively fishing for kills. I don't understand. I'm not good enough at shooters. Or maybe it's not good enough at third-person shooters like this. I can play I can play a decent Overwatch. I can play a decent Overwatch. I, I got to Masters. I, I'm pretty good at Call of Duty. But this shit... Ugh. This shit. This shit, though. Uh, there's that zone making its way. I wonder if he sees me. I wonder if he knows. I wonder if he has known. Was that? No. Hello. I hear a car. Not that car. Uh-oh. Things are starting to get a little bit hairier. Come to think of it, where is that on the map right there? Uh, that's, this is 100 meters each, so that's about, you ever take 150? So I'm going to need a zero in my scope. Uh, give me that. Uh, it's already at 100. Never mind, that's good. Okay, actually the safe zone is barely moving. I am still going to have to move, and so is our player beneath us. That guy over there is going to have to move too. We've got a couple, uh... Couple interesting things going on. Oh, are you the guy? Huh. <laughs> if anything, I was gonna waste his med kits. Actually, he was rolling with a UMP. I kinda kinda wanna go on him right now. Never mind, I saw him. Head out. 
Don't know. Sure as hell got, gave that guy a spook, though. I see your head. Poke it out for me, please. Oh, that was a gunshot. Not at me, though. Poke your fucking head out. Do it. Do it, Anakin. Poke it out. Actually, I think I know what he's going to do. He's waiting. He's waiting on me. Ah, oh, shit. I know what he's going to do. He's just going to wait till the zone gets past me, but not to him yet. And he's going to kill me. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, shit. You guys ready to get one shot by a shotgun? I know I am. Oh, he was still healing. That's weird. Okay. Oh my god, an 8x scope. Yes. Um, okay. Painkiller. Uh, anything else I need? Take some more of you. Gunfire is going on over there. Gunfire over there. Person over there. Uh, zone's moving. Kind of want to kill that person over there, but I also don't really want to. I actually should leave. Oh, the zone's this way. I thought the zone was that way. Oh, fuck. They, they were actually in the safe zone. Who would have guessed? Players in the close vicinity. There's definitely one or two of you. No doubt. Or at least there's one. Oh, is that you? Is that, are you a player? That's a bike. Uh, bikes just don't appear, though. They generally have a person with them. Oh, come on. Don't do me like this. Oh, uh, shit. I see that. That's a care package right there. I'm gonna stop the burst on this guy. Or a single. I'm gonna need the accuracy. Dang, dude. Oh man, we're gonna we're kind of we're in top twenty. So what happens when you just don't fucking do anything? Oh hey, there you are. How the fuck did that not kill you? How the fuck did I miss that shot? Oh my god, the bobbing and the weaving. Alright, you know what? Fuck you. Annoying. This shit, dude. Annoying. I'm a very bad sniper, but this gun does a lot of damage. Because it's a sniper. Uh... Yeah, 15 scope. Oh my god. Um... His helmet was badly damaged. Oh, I hit him in the helmet. That's what... That's what... Okay, I got it now. Uh, shit. We're gonna start getting into the hardcore shit, man. 15x scope. Jesus. Never actually used the 15x before. Must have been in the care package. I don't think it's ever- I don't think it's actually available in non-care package form. A little bit scared right now, man. These are finally gonna end the- end the game with a bang. Got a few kills. Feels good. Four kills, specifically. Not terrible. Make that five kills. You proud of me? I'm a little bit proud of myself for that shot. Oh shit, I thought there was a guy behind me. Medkit time. He's gonna have to run fast. Or else he's gonna get destroyed. The zone is, is gonna slowly start to take him over. He's uh... He still sees me. But, uh, I think he starts to- he started to realize his- what he's gotta do. There he is. Someone else was also firing at him. Oh fuck, these houses most definitely have someone. Shit. Ah, fuck! That guy in the window sees me. Ah! Oh. 
Got problems, that guy in the window. And the guy behind me. Holy shit, is there really only seven alive? Just don't die, Bricky. There's a guy over there. There's a guy over there. There's two guys over there, actually. The guy behind me hopefully died by the other guy. They're shotgunning each other. Now's the time. Burst fire. He got a kill. He's running around the side. That, there's a, that's a motorcycle. What the fuck? Got him. Four alive. Two of them are fighting on, on that far side. Which means I need to watch out for the last one. Probably hiding behind one of these trees. Three alive. One got killed with an M416. Okay, cool. I've got a sniper rifle. I'm, I therefore have a tactical advantage. But this UAS is so out of place. Is there a guy hiding behind it? No, it doesn't look like it. Alright, Bricky. This may be when you die. Three alive, sure, but... Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. They're both firing at me. Come on. You only need a little bit longer. Uh! Got it. Made it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I'm, I'm in the safe zone. You guys gotta start moving your ass. What? How'd he hit me? Where is he? I see one of them on the roof, but... Is he over there? I don't see him. Got the first shot off. Yes! How the hell? I don't see this guy! He's got like a flash hider on or something. He's like hiding in the grass. I can't fucking see him. Come on, man. Oh, I think I see him now. I saw him. Oh, fuck. Damn it! He had an M24. God damn it. Motherfuckers hiding the prone in the goddamn grass with their god uh my god. That was the whole that was the thing the whole time. The whole time Ugh Well at least I know I was doing so much damage to me. That M24 sniper rifle is so strong. God oh man, man that tilts me. That tilt I was doing so well. I got eight kills. I did so well. Damn it. Oh well, everyone. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching this fireside, Bricky. Appreciate it very, very much. And uh, if you watched all the way to the end of the video, can you type in all caps promo code Bricky in the comment section? If you don't haven't seen Fireside Bricky. Uh, that's what we do every time. We type something stupid that pertains to the situation uh, at the end in all caps. All right. Bye-bye.